morning, everyone. Uh, let's, what is everybody doing? All right, let's look at Foot Locker here. Let's see if we can get Foot Locker. All right, Foot Locker already had a setup in here. Let me just see where it went. Well, it went to the first target, 40 bucks. Journeywoman did it, anybody else? All right, geez, we, I might get lucky here. Let's see. If you did it, I would have gotten out of some of it there, or, or at least half of the whole thing. I'm watching this here now. Foot Locker, stay on top of it, everyone. I'm trying to be focused to get something here today. Market is trying to hang on. I don't think it does. I did look at that quick when I was on the call. Watching Foot Locker here. If you did it on your own, I would have got out some there because it didn't meet the first target. Here we go, Foot Locker. Let's watch. All right, stopping this is going to be 41.20. And I don't have the entry yet. Actually, this isn't going to be small. Let's do 25 by 20. 25 by 20 foot locker. 25 by 20 foot locker. Short if you want it. And if you don't know what I'm doing in the open house, I apologize. I had to do an interview this morning with CBS. So I just got off of it. We're going to try to get something here soon. 25 is the entry. Stop. It's 4120. It's not small. Oh, Debaz was in and out. Oh, Journeyman was out. Everybody did it, got out. Good job, people. All right, let's see. See if we can get it. See if I can get it. Actually, let's do 49 by 20. 49 by 20, foot locker. Short. Take it, take it. Just don't worry about even where you got filled. Get the stop in. It's going to roll over. Get the stop in at 20. Here it is. Let's see if we can get one quick trade. Thank you for cooperating again today, market. 41.20 is a stop. Full locker. Here we go. Here we go. And the other targets I had, I wrote in the room 39. Here, be in it if you want it. And if you did it on your own, that's fine. We're still going to get something. This is amazing. Yeah, 41.20. That's plenty of room. All right, here we go. We got to break the load, though. We got to go back down to the number 40. I want to see 40 broken in Foot Locker, or I might just scalp out of it here. I do think the market's lower, though, and I don't really have time to look at that right now. Oh, you're not out. Journey Woman's not out. Okay. All right, well, just make sure you have the stop in. Actually, I do want to look at this really quickly because of the fact that... All right, Fun Locker, you're in it. We're watching 40. And I don't really want it to bounce anymore. 40.10. Oh, actually went to 39.56. I just saw that. That That's really good. All right, 39. I just see it went to, I didn't even see that. I was just looking at it so quickly here to get it. All right, that's good sign. Do, 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 do. Thanks, Kathy. Wow, this really did have a nice move. I just noticed this here. It's one above. Journey Woman, I don't know why you didn't get out of that. If any of you did this on your own, which you know what to do, you should have gotten out of this trade. That moved a dollar. Now, I mean, obviously, we're in it here, but you could have got two trades. This was the exit. I absolutely, with a shot of a doubt, would have been out. I just noticed that now. It went to 39.56. I would have been out of that. It doesn't matter. We're in it now, and it's working, and we're up. One quick trade in here, and then we can here. Well, not for me, probably. I'm probably going to be on TV somewhere today. And it's snowing slash raining. So much for winter being over. Here, Foot Locker. We have to break 40. And we are going to do that any second. We have to break 40 again, I mean, a second time. Um, let me just look here. Time of the day. I didn't even get a chance to look at what econ is coming out of what time market's going to fall today. No, oh, this does not look good. Ay, 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 to do, to do. I do not know why. The market is not want to hold up, but it just doesn't. And that's the name of the game here. Is anyone in the world still in that Walmart put? I mean, I'm just wondering. Well, look at that when we're done, because that... 
is really going down. And Journey Woman, why did you not get out of this here? I just noticed it went down a dollar. I want a reason why you didn't get out of this. You got to take your profits on these trades. You got to take your profits on these trades. Here, Foot Locker. And if you didn't do it, it's really too late. You really had, I mean, you could take it here, but the stop's going to be where it's going to be. Here, here, Foot Locker. Pay attention, everyone. 407. I think it goes to 39 today. <laughs> Feel even more certain of that now with that low. But sooner rather than later for me here would be preferential. Here, Foot Locker. One hard push down, one hard push down, and I'm going to take it. Wherever we get a hard push. Through 40. I knew this was the one. I will talk about it when we're done, but I gave a lecture in the room. I, I talked early this morning because I knew I had to do the call, and a lot of you weren't here because I normally don't get on early. Um, but we'll talk about it when we're done. Here, five minutes setting up even. If you want a short foot locker here, you can take it. Bigger stop. It still has to be 4120. But if you missed it, it's valid. It's confirmed. Here's foot locker. It's shaped up to be a pretty good week. Strange. Strange week, though, with the way that we started. If you look at the start of the week this week, the rally the market had into the Friday, it's bizarro world. Bizarro. Bizarro. And we're not going to hold today. So the question is do we kaboom now? Do we kaboom later? I prefer now with Foot Locker. Here we go. Here we go. Foot locker. Here. Here it is, everybody. Watch, 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 watch. Oh, nice call. Nice call with I mean, this is like I'm like blinking and looking at charts. Here, foot locker. <laughs> 77. All right, let's just look at this thing here. Koala Bear did it twice. Wow. Koala Bear, you're having a good a good year, Koala Bear. Some of you are finally starting to get your mojo. Here, Foot Locker. I literally, my hand is on the button here because I'm not letting this get away from me and it's almost a buck and it's Friday and it's everything and we're busy and it's Foot Locker. And no piggies today.
I forgot how wild Foot Locker is. I'm still in it, but and I'm, I'm up in it. I forgot how wild this stock is. The jerky, whippy, I should say. I think this breaks Santa Falls again, but it's very whippy. I, I mean, I didn't get out right there at 75. I thought it was going to break the low. It's, it, this, this stock is very jerky. I forgot, but now I've remembered. Galahad's out with profit. Good. If you took it out in there, it's fine. I, I mean, it was like pennies from the low, and I didn't get out. Um, and I'm trying to hang on to it. Foot Locker is whippy. I forgot that, but now I'm reminded. <laughs> here. This has got to keep going right here. I am going to take it. Here, Foot Locker. Back in the 80s, and I'm not letting this get away from me now. See if it breaks 80. If it breaks 80, I'm staying with it. If it doesn't, I'm taking it. Just going to try. Fred made $250. Good job. Here, Foot Locker. Here, here, Foot Locker. I'd love to get a buck out of this. Was that possible? There, no, I'm out. I took it, I took it, I took it. I just can't sweat it through the low. If you're still in it, it looks fine, it looks great. I'm not letting it back up over 40 again. It was a nice trade. Great job. Listen, if you did it twice, you got pain. If you did it, and you're still in it, I love it. I really, really do. I cannot believe that I just did something like that after doing a television interview. I'm like, I'm like this is crazy town. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, listen, I'm done. I'm done for the week. <laughs> what does everybody want to go over? If you're still in it, stay with the trade. Stops 4120. But I am done. I do not want it to bounce up in the 40s. I already did it once. It looks great. Tr was trying to get a buck out of it. Close enough. Close enough. But it's going to try to break the low. If you're still with it, fine. Jasmine, yes, I will go over that right now. Is anyone still in it? We're going to go over the trade. We'll go over the gap. We'll go over the market. I don't know if there's anything else to go over. Here, this is probably going to go right now. You stinker. I just didn't want to hold it through a backup over at 40. Well, let's see. So whippy. Is anyone still in it? Green Maverick's still in it. All right. Okay, let's go over it. When I call a train, the first number is the entry, the second one's a stop. Here, it's going to try to break the low. Journey Woman, don't miss your exit this time. Dubod's is out. No piggies. And if the market falls off a planet today, you can redo this like 10 other times and everything else in the world too. So, which, which we don't know, but I think the market does fall. Um, the first number is the entry. The second one's a stop. So, you know, if I say 50 by 20, that means you're shorting it at 50, putting the stop at 20. So what's your risk? 70 cents. That's how you figure it. First number's the entry, second one's a stop. This is going to break the low. I still think I did the right thing because you just don't know. This looks great though. Uh, what were the other ones? Key, it, I have a set risk, money, and set, uh, dollars. It's not the same share quantity every trade. Why? Because a stop is not the same in every trade that I take. For example, today's stop was 70 cents, but you can't take the same quantity. Sometimes I take 4,000 shares of something, but I didn't do that today. And if I had, what would my risk have been? 2,800 bucks, which I do not risk in day trades. You can't go by the share quantity. You go by the amount of the difference between the entry and the stop. So I, already, I guess you're here in a trial. I think you emailed me. For those of you that have emailed me, I'm sorry that I did not have a chance to get back to you. I've had a very busy week. Nobody ever went broke taking a profit. That's true.
Journey Woman, this was a great call if you did it on your own. I'm not sure why you didn't get out, but this was good if you did it. Some of you did. Then I called this here. This was perfect timing right after the interview. Boom. Looks good down to the low. I do think this goes to 39, and I did write that in the room. I did write that in the room. I wrote it in the room this morning. Anyways, you must risk whatever you can afford. $500, $1,000, 200 bucks, $100, whatever it is, that's how you're going to figure out your share quantity. And it's not the same for every trade that I take. And it's not going to be the same for every trade you take too. And that's something that you got to get used to in your mind. And I usually make it easy on myself by roughing it out. So this is not an exact science. For example, you've got to get the trade when I call it quick. And if in your mind you can't figure out 70 cents that quickly, take a couple hundred shares. And then if you realize you actually can take more, grab a couple more, put the stop. If you oversize yourself though, and you notice you did it and the trade starts to drop, which by the way this is, you would have been up at the number I hit it, then back it off. Take a couple out, you're up, put the stop back in. Here, here it goes. I knew this was gonna do this. It's gonna to go to the 39. Is anyone still in this besides Green Maverick? Here it goes, here it's through the low, Foot Locker. Anyways, the point is that you have to have a dollar and cents amount that every trade should be equal because what if you take one good trade that works fantastic and you risk a thousand bucks and it works great. And then what if you take another trade? It works great. You have two winners, you risk the same. Here it goes, it's gonna to go to 39. <laughs> I still can't believe I did what I did today. Or even the other day too. What was the day? I was on Cheddar. That was crazy too. Um, the, the, um, and then what if you take a third trait? You have two winners and one loser. And the, here, here it is. It's gonna go to 39. Crazy town. Uh, and the third trade is a loser and you don't risk a thousand bucks. You risk 3,000. And then you're actually down money in your account after two winners and one loser. All because of what? You didn't size yourself correctly. So do you see how it is? It's very important that your risk be the same or close to the same on every trade you take. Here it is, Foot Locker. Here, let's look at the market. Man, what a great call. The market is going to try to hold that area. I don't think it's going to last by 4 o'clock today unless some magnificent buying comes in and sweeps the market off its feet like Prince Charming. And I don't think that's going to happen. 264.30 is the area, and we got within 52 cents of that. And I don't think it's going to happen unless, like I said, Prince Charming comes in and sweeps the market off its feet. I just don't think it's going to happen. We're nowhere near that area in the queues. We broke it already in the Dow. All of these things look so different now. Um, is everybody out? How much money do you need to start trading my way? You need to have a, a, an account where you can actively day trade. That's all that you need. And you need to be able to afford my class, which is $5,500. And then you have to open up an account. You can open up a prop account with as little as $2,500. You can open up a retail account, but you're gonna need way more, 25,000. You Google online, find out brokers, call around, get information. You have to be able to actively day trade. Get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out. Take the trade today in Foot Locker, get in, get out. And I would really be bar by bar in it if anyone is still in this now, because you're 30 cents here from this dream target and it was a great call, and I knew this gap would work. If you want information for referrals key, just you know, ref just email me. I don't wanna to get too off target now about, about brokers. Just email me if you want a referral. Like, it really doesn't matter who you use. You gotta call them and talk to them, do your due diligence, find out what they charge for platforms and commissions and all of that stuff. Here's the chart, here's Foot Locker. Where do you think it's gonna go? Lower, that was a really nice trade. What did I say this morning in the room? What did I say for those of you that were here? Anybody that was here? What did I say about Foot Locker? Was anyone alive or awake or here when I said it? Jasmine, email me. I can refer you to that too. Was anyone here that's still here? When I talked about this gap this morning, anyone? Okay, Journey Woman. Good to see ya. 
Big Fudge doesn't remember. He's drunk on Foot Locker. <laughs> Dubois said this is the one. Tango Bravo, you were here. What did I say? And you're new. Green Maverick wasn't here. Dubois said this was the one. What else did I say? Tango Bravo, you were here. Fred did it two times. Great call. Thank you. What was the other one this morning? Oh, J.C. Penny. The poor baby. J.C. Penny worked, but nowhere near as good as Foot Locker. So I'm definitely glad we did this one, but this one is fine too. What happened to this thing? Nothing at all. It was a failure completely and totally. Well, I rated the gap. I rated the gap. I got up in the morning and I looked at this gap and I knew it as soon as I saw it. Instinct, immediate. However, I still rated it. But the first thing I said was, this is a good one. And I rated the gap. That's what you come and learn from me. You learn my system to know which gaps are good. It's a 26 point rating system. But I said something very important today that no one seems to remember. I said, no matter what this does today, no matter where it rallies, it's going to work. That's what I said. That's how much I like this gap. I said, in fact, I gave 44. I gave 44 as a resistance level for this. Scroll up in the room. I wrote it in early this morning. I said, I'm even going to say this. You can do it no matter what. Because I didn't know what time exactly I'd be back. Anyways, I said, this was such a good gap. I said, this is, I don't even care where it rallies. Be careful here, though. Do not let this back up against you if you're still in the trade. Time of the day is 10 o'clock. I bar by bar it. Anyways, what did I see in this and what would you learn if you came from me? You've learned the rating system, which tells you what? What's the purpose of the system? The purpose of the system is to tell you, is the stock going to have buying or is the stock going to have selling today in the gap? Here it goes. It's going to get a 39. Holy crap. <laughs> I got out of it and then it fell down. <laughs> I can't complain. It's been a good week. Here, Foot Locker. Here's going to 39. It could even go to 38. Go! Anyways, the point is, though, it tells you when you're, what I'm looking for, what I'm trying to predict is selling or buying action. So when I look in the pre-market and I see the gap itself, which everybody can see, I'm not predicting the gap. I didn't know what the earnings would be in Foot Locker, and I didn't know where it would go. And I don't know if this was tonight or this morning. Let's look. Actually, it was this morning. So here it was. Anyways, the point is this happened this morning early, and then I get up and I look at it, and I say, is buying going to come in on the day here with the Foot Locker, or is selling pressure going to come in on it? This is really going to go to the number. Holy cow, look at that. So that's what I do. I'm predicting what's going to happen on the day. Not in the pre-market. You wait for it to happen. Just like GPS was up. This gap up. Ran up here. This was last night, 3560. I didn't open anywhere near that, but it's still the point that a gap. This was a bullish gap. So I looked at this this morning too. I did not think this was going to get bought. I was right. It's not getting bought today. The overall chart here looks good in GPS, but you can't go long the stock today and make any money. It's falling. And I wouldn't even go long it in here. Anyways, the point is that I'm trying to predict if buying is going to come in or selling is going to come in, and that's how you make money when you trade. And that's why I'm so aggressive, because I want to get it right away. I want to get it as quickly as I can after it sets up, because I'm expecting, I have an expectation that something's going to happen that's going to move the stock quickly, whether it's up or down, which is how I predict with the points. That's what you come and learn in the Golden Gap class. But the point is that I'm figuring it out ahead of time what I'm looking for. If it sets up, I do it. If it doesn't, I don't. If it rates good, I watch it. If it doesn't, then I don't. I'm looking for buying or selling action to come in, but I prefer to short. And that has nothing to do with the market today, even though I don't know exactly what's going to happen here per se. I I'm, I'm mostly prefer to short because of the fact that selling action happens very quickly. And, and I like to make money and be out quickly. And so even if you didn't hold this all the way down today, you would have first quick dollar move here. That was great. I would have called it. We would have done it. We would have been in it. We would have been out. Now, I probably would not have done this. I would have called it. I'd like to do one. If I had done this, I wouldn't have done another one. Anyways, I didn't do this. Some of you did on your own and done the class. You knew what to do. We did this. We held it down. 
And if you're still in it, just be careful. 12 cents from the dream target, I think you gotta be out. 10.04 time of the day, market trying to hold, but I don't think it does. Market probably will fall today, later. 11, 12, unless Prince Charming comes in. I didn't say anything about thirty dollars. I know I don't. Where are you getting thirty dollars? Thirty dollars is nine points of and forty cents away. What do you mean thirty dollars? This isn't going to thirty dollars today. I never said that. Tango Bravo. What did I say in the morning? I wouldn't I would not worry necessarily so much about holding something all the way down to a number as far as what you're trying to do. You're trying to turn your money around in a profitable way. So as long as you can do that, you will be successful. It's about the win ratio, which I've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt is really key to doing this. 2018 has been an outstanding start to the year. And 2017 was good too. If you know that most of the trades you take, you're going to be up and you're going to be able to make money in, then whether you hold it to the bigger number of the dream target is not that important. There will be times when something just drops like a brick and you're in it. Actually, let's look at Walmart. And you happen to be in that trade and get it to some massive number. But that's not your goal every day. Your goal really is to have the consistency. More wins than losses. Few losses and way more wins. And I, I'm so confident in myself with that and so good at what I do that that's exactly what we achieve here. But, you know, don't worry if you didn't hold it all the way down. I'm not worried about it. It doesn't bother me. We got it. That's all that counts. This, is anyone still in this? If you're still in it, just get out of it today. It's it's you're really up a lot. And whatever happened to this thing? Anyone have any questions about anything else? Everyone's been doing really good. Um and this is a slow road to China here, but trying. Um, what do you, what's your questions key about the class? Ask me now. Ask me now because I'm not doing anything else and there's no reason to call anything else. And if you did the call on this, you're up and I'd stop for the day. Um, market's going to be wishy-washy here, although I think we drop. I don't know where we could boom. I haven't, it's been a slow week for calling options because uh, literally um, things have been falling and the best ones to play have been rallying. Uh, Walmart was a great putt. We just have to be a little bit patient here. I don't know what your questions are about the class key, but you can ask me. And if anyone else has any questions about today, the room, foot lock of the class, ask me now. Let's just look at some of these things like Amazon. What are some of the things I teach? I teach the 26 points, which is the whole day on Saturday. You learn how I figure out the gap reading. Then on Sunday, I teach six different entries where you learn how to take the entries yourself. You don't need me. If you want to join the room, you can. It's beneficial because I make the calls like today. But you learn on your own how to do it by yourself. You learn how to read what the, where the targets are, and you learn how to take the entries. And that's what the class is. It's that's the two days. It's a lot of information and a lot of charts. Amazon doesn't look so great here either. Let me look at Microsoft. If you want to email me key, I'll send you the outline for the class, which talks about the to topics that I discussed, but in general, Saturdays at points and Sundays the entries. So first you have the strategy, then you got to learn how to take the trades. Um, wow, that was a big sell-off day for Apple yesterday. I'll look at Microsoft and I'll look at Netflix for everyone. It's live teaching. Live. Live, just like you're here. You're here with me now. You're asking me questions and we go through it and I say the question out loud and then I answer it. 
Eastern time, March 10th and 11th, 9 to 5, Saturday and Sunday, which I always teach it on a weekend, so it doesn't interfere with trading. Netflix actually looks, again, the strongest of anything. When I look at Apple and I look at Amazon and I look at the other things, I look at Microsoft next, next Netflix still looks good. The question is, where and when does it go above again and make a new high? That I do not know because the market is going to affect everything, and that's the truth. The $5,500 class does not include the trading room. If you sign up by today, it includes one month free in the wealth class, which is Monday. You get one month free for the early bird if you sign up by today, Friday, March 2nd. And you get the wealth class, which I'm doing Monday after the room. Some of you already emailed me about that. Again, I have not had time to respond to you because I had a busy day yesterday, but I will. Depending on what happens today, I could respond to you today. If I'm not on TV today, then it'll be sat or if I am, it'll be Saturday. Microsoft, what's going on here? G Wiz, Tony, are first of all, if you did this trade and you were up a lot in there, you didn't get out of any of it. That's not that wasn't a good decision. Uh, Tony, are you still in this option? Because that was a lot of money, and to my knowledge, everyone got out of it. I did say some big numbers for this, 98, 100, but when the market started to fall and this started to fall, you should have taken your profits. This was thousands and thousands of dollars for a lot of you. I, if you're still in this trade and you didn't get out of any of it, uh, you need to write down a journal why. You should not have held on. That was a lot of money in that trade. It's all the way back down. You should have got out of at least half, and I understand what you're saying, but when certain things start to affect certain things, which the market has this week, on this point here, on this day, when it failed to get over the high and the market started falling, you should have gotten out of 75% of the trade, the whole thing, or half. I, to let this go away from you, I mean, mm -mm. it's a learning lesson here for you. You and Galahad should have a party. I think he's already signed out, but this is exactly the kind of thing that Galahad used to do. I don't think he did at Microsoft. But you can't be up a lot of money like this and then... I know you have a number in sight, and I have targets, and we had targets, and we're looking at things, but circumstances change. The daily room, you have to sign up for the class in order to have access to the room. The room is normally for students, although I did an open house this week and last week, too, because I had so many people interested, and my schedule's been crazy town. I've decided to do it, but I don't normally do this, so I won't be doing an open house again anytime soon. It's to give people an option to come in the room and just check it out. But you've got to do the class and learn the system in order to be able to join the room. It's just the way it is. The trade's set up too fast. Some of you were even asking me today about the entries. You see, you got, you know, here, wow, look, Foot Locker, under 39. Is anyone still in it at all? Nice call. Nope, you got to do the class to join the room. Do I teach which stocks to train? That's what, that's what we do. That's what we do. We, we look for gap. That's what we do. That's exactly it. But they're gapping. You're looking for the gaps, and then we rate the gaps. That's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn which stocks to trade. You're going to learn which ones to do, to pick, to pick it. How did I find this today? Here was the list of things to do. That's exactly what you'll learn. There's a million things just in this list here. Plus, there was a million earnings out. I could plop in the room as well. I'm teaching you how to find the good ones, and you only need one, clearly, which I like to focus on, and that's what we try to do. Although I told you JCPenney, too, was, a, a, you know, a possibility. Let's look at GE. I forgot about that. I just saw that. If you sign up for the class today, you get one month free in the room. If you want to join the room permanently, you sign up for the year, you get 30% off. If you want to go month to month, it's $400 a month after the class, Daniel. Dubaz just got another trade out of the Foot Locker. Wow, look at G. Yeah, I think Foot Locker will be in play all day. However, I would wait now for later in the day, wait for a higher time frame, wait for the 15 minute, wait for the five, wait for a little bit. Wait till 11 o'clock, wait till lunch. Um, at this point now, this will close red today. This will not retrace itself. It won't close with a tail like the other one did the other day. Whatever the other piece of crap one was. This looks like it's going to break 39. It might even try right now, but this is just going to sell off. Oops, hold on.
Yay! I'm on TV today. Neil Cavuto. All right, I got to go. Listen, have a great day, everyone. I got the call. 1014. I'm done with the trades anyways. We're good to go. Have a wonderful day. Those of you that emailed me, I'll call you or email you tomorrow. Watch me and Neil Cavuto at 4 o'clock. Talk to you later. Bring Alyssa Armo into this and Jonathan Honig on what the, the long-term impact could be because obviously the first thing you think of, and I'll, I'll begin with you, Jonathan, is that other industries take a look at the, the, the steel industry getting this support from the White House and then a, a sort of a me tooism builds up here. Now, Wall Street is the first to complain about that, but if memory serves me right, Wall Street was the beneficiary of a big... Uh, you know, federal grant, as it were, and a bailout of its own after the meltdown, and many other industries have experienced it. What is your sense of what, what this could lead to? Well, this is setting up exactly that slippery slope, Neil, of more companies, more industries going to the government with their handout, demanding their piece of cronyism. You know, the Democrats had their cronyism with, uh, with the Solyndra and, and, the, and the environment. This is the Republicans' version of cronyism, helping steel workers, helping the aluminum industry. I don't know, let's go back in the 70s. Maybe there's some Zenith television employees. They would like their jobs protected, Neil. I mean, this war, this trade war has already begun, but it's a trade war against American citizens who just want to, oh, I don't know, buy something cheaper so they can save some money for their families. This is terrible. No Democrat could do this type of harm to the free economy that Donald Trump is doing, Neil. All right, I'm going to put you down as a maybe on this. Now, um, Melissa, I'm looking at all this and I'm wondering, I know markets fear of the, the unknown and how widespread that. I understand also the prospect of inflation, of obviously if you're putting a tariff on a good, uh, it makes that good more expensive and all of that. But uh, I thought it was interesting this week that the Federal Reserve, Chairman Jerome Powell, had, had kind of expressed concerns about this, but kind of hoping that cooler heads would prevail. What do you think of that? Well, he, I think that the market really fell more on him talking, the Fed chair talking this week, than it did on this tariff thing. I mean, you look at the chart, we rallied today. I don't know where we head next week. We definitely have to gap up Monday and follow through higher from the rally today. But in, I want to address Jonathan's point. We cannot survive or exist without the steel and aluminum industries. We need them. And right now, the U.S. is the largest importer of steel in the world. We can't survive why, without why these industries. That? Can I just question that premise? What, why is that? Why can we not steal with uh, exist without a uh, foreign steal well, just we're like not we on exist without foreign field. television well, uh, but, but why is that industry protected? Why do they deserve government handouts, government cronyism more than any other industry? Listen, Trump is trying to get ahead of having to bail them out like we did bail out the banks, like we did bail, bail out the auto industry because what we can't live without them. He doesn't want to have to bail them out like we bailed everybody can you else just answer, out. Can you just answer that question? Why is it that we cannot live, that Americans cannot live without a domestic producer of steel? You haven't answered that question. Neither has the president. Well, we can't because because what if we would get in a war with North Korea? Where are we going to get steel from China? That well, is, that is a fear that's been raised, that it's almost been heightened to a national security concern. I, I, I understand where that's coming from. But, Jonathan, your view <laughs> is that once you make a carve out for one industry, you make it for others. You made the same, of course, for, for, for the banking industry after the meltdown. You made the same for the housing and the mortgage industry, the auto industry. So you can make a compelling argument. But here's where I'll differentiate a little bit to her point, and that is that steel is sort of the bedrock. If everything hits the fan and we don't have enough of it here or where to disadvantage here, we're certainly not going to be getting it from people who wish us right. ill, right? That's right. Neil, Neil we have enough uh, uh, armaments, military armaments in this country to blow up North Korea or any other adversary by hundreds of times over. So that, that's, a, that's a, a straw man. That's a red herring. That's not even worth addressing. What but is if worth we needed addressing steel, is if what we needed steel, and we're increasingly, I see your point, Jonathan, but if we needed steel and we're increasingly reliant on, on those from abroad, we would be at a disadvantage, at least in the beginning, right? If we needed steel, Neil, we would buy it. But what From you're who? doing by justifying From our enemies? these, but but <laughs> Neil, you're, you know, you're setting up this impossible situation. Of, what if a no, war breaks? No, I just out? remember. War breaks, I just remember what it was like after Pearl Harbor, right? Well, I, it, it's a longer discussion, Neil. To you're be honest, right, you're but right. I, I'll just I'll, I'll just put towards what you're 
offering as the remedy. Central planning, a la Soviet Russia, a la Venezuela, where government picking winners and losers. So you can spin a fantasy about what if this breaks out, what if that breaks out? All I mean, right, we have So, Melissa, are we doing it because we've done it before where we've had a perfectly justified reason to support or help an industry? I was looking back in history of prior trade tips we've had. The steel industry has been back and forth to the White House numerous times, sometimes getting what they want, sometimes going back to John Kennedy, not getting what they want when he slapped, uh, you know, slapped them down for a price increase. But is that a dangerous trend? What that's expected, isn't that in and of itself a dangerous trend? I don't think it is because they need help. If you look at the charts, AKS still is worth five bucks. It used to be worth over $70 11 years ago. X, United Steel, look but, but, at the chart. That's in a downtrend. These companies, we might end up bailing them out because we need them to have, we need but, that industry in the U.S. You can buy from, well, if, you can if, import. If need, if, need, oh. yeah, if, need is the only, if need is the only justification for government involvement in the economy, then that's that's it, Neil. That's it. That, that's an economic well, Let me switch gears very quickly, guys. Do you you think this has damaging impact on the markets? Melissa, I mean, let's see how this pr proceeds. If it escalates <laughs> into a, the trade war, will this hurt the markets and that it gets to be inflationary, it gets to be global friction? You know the drill. What do you think? I think the markets are strong. I think the market's going to react to anything. It's going to react to certain people talking. But not this, not it's this. Gonna, well, it's going to react to this. It did, but whether it's okay. going to change the trend you know, of the market, no. Jonathan. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know if Donald Trump has read a book. He's certainly not a rat history book. He would know that those who repeat, who are repeating it are going to repeat it once again. Neil, look up Herbert Hoover. He inducted these exact type of trade tariffs in 1930. He turned what could have been a mild recession into a decade-long Great Depression. We're headed on the same road. I remember talking to Hoover at the time and warned him about it. But uh, <laughs> thank you guys very, very much. <laughs> Thanks. You know, there are young people in this room saying, Neil, talk to Herbert Hoover. All right, uh, let me turn from the, uh, the, the market storm to the real 